Welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today I'm going to be doing some coloring for Happy Harvest and that's because somehow my camera ate up all of my coloring footage except for this cute scarecrow. So I'm going to link above to the original Happy Harvest video so that you can see the scarecrow coloring and now I'm going to go through the coloring of all of the other images in this set. Now at the very beginning here, I'm actually going to go through my coloring in normal speed instead of speeding it up so I can talk a little bit more about what I like to do. So I always like to lay down my lightest color first, and that's to wet the paper and make it easier to blend all of my colors together. I also like to leave some white area in the spot that I want to remain the lightest. So now I'm going over that light marker that I laid down with my medium marker. And once I add that medium marker where I want to, I'm going to take my light marker again and blend that out into the white. And the reason I do this is when you keep layering the marker over and over on top of each other, it does get darker. So by leaving those areas white, it makes it so that I don't layer too much of my light marker and it makes a nice white area and it almost gives you three shades with two markers. Now here I'm going to be adding my darkest marker just around the edges and around that little wing there just because I know that wing would cast a little shadow on him. And this is a pretty dark marker so I'm trying to have a nice light hand. Now I can move on to my medium marker to blend that dark one out. And then once I do that, I can move on to my light marker. Oh, excuse me, I just added a little bit more dark there on the bottom of his belly. And the medium again. And then now I can use the light. And this is a really cool way to get a black bird with still some dimension to it. So now I'm going to work on that metal bird using the same markers. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here because you're going to see that I'm going to use the same exact method as I used for the bird on the left. So now I've got my medium. I'm adding my darkest marker now. Then I can blend that with the medium out and then the light into my white area to kind of create an even lighter shade and that middle shade in between. And so now I'm just adding a little bit more color because I thought he was a little bit too light at the top. And now I can repeat the same thing with my other bird. And I think it's kind of fun to pick different areas of little critters like this to be light. So the top of the bird or to the left, to the right, it's just kind of fun to play around with. So now I'm adding that dark color all around the outside. I can blend it with my medium and then blend that out with the light. Now these are my favorite colors for beaks. I just love them so much. And I just put a little bit of dark towards the base of the beak and then just blend it out. Now these are my three favorite yellow markers. I love them so much and they're perfect for sunflowers, which I just absolutely love. And so here you see I've laid down that light marker again, once again to wet the paper, which it just makes it easier for me to blend them. I really like to do that. And so I'm putting that medium marker out and then using that light marker towards the edge. And I'm really using a light hand towards the edge because I want those little tips of the petals to be really nice and light. So now that I've blended those out, I can go ahead and add my darkest marker at the bottom of the petals. And this is just how I always love to color flowers. I like to make the base of the petals darker and the tips lighter, but you could do anything because anything's going to look really, really cool. So now I'm blending that medium out, or the dark with the medium, and I'm really making sure to make those petals that are in the background a little bit darker. I want them to kind of stand apart there a little bit from the front petals. And so I'm just blending that all out and now I can just blend just a tiny bit with my light marker towards the tips of those top petals. Now I'm going to do the same exact technique with the smaller flower. And the cool thing that I love about Copic marker coloring is once I've kind of decided how I'm going to color something, I can repeat it a lot faster. So I can make a lot more cards or for example color the smaller one in a similar way and get things done really nice and quickly. So now I've got all my petals colored, so I'm going to work on uh, the inside part of the, of the flower here. And I'm just using two markers, but using that white area there again to create that middle shade. And it didn't create enough of a middle shade for me, so I'm touching the light marker to the dark one to pick up a little bit of ink to create that medium shade to really help my blending. And I love to do this when my markers are kind of far apart or I don't have that many markers. It's like getting an extra shade with every one of your markers because you can touch a light to dark. 
Now here's just a little white gel pen and I like to fill in those little spots on the flowers. I think it looks really cute with a white gel pen like that. Now here is my little stem and I'm just using two colors again, just really nice and simple and just blending those out. And now I can work on my pumpkins. And my favorite pumpkin colors are the same as my beet colors. I just love these two. I think they're so pretty. And with pumpkins, I really like to play around with where I want to put my darkest parts. I think it's really fun to just kind of mess around with them and, and have fun. And with these two markers to help with the blending, I really do like touching that light to the dark. It really helps a lot. And so now I can color this little mini pumpkin in a similar way, once again, using the light to dark technique there, touching technique to help blend. Now this little image is gonna help tell me where my darkest part should be because I've got one pumpkin in front of the other two. So I'm gonna make the other ones kind of have a shadow from that pumpkin that's in the front. Then I thought it would be fun to create some of the shading up towards the top of the stem there. Because sometimes pumpkins are darker kind of where that stem's coming out at the top. So I just thought it'd be fun to play around with a different way of coloring a pumpkin. So there you can see once again, I've got my dark down and I'm blending my light out to the outside edge and then just helping my blending a little bit by touching the light marker to the dark marker to pick up a little bit of that ink. And now once again, I can just go over my light marker that I laid down with my darkest marker and blend those two together. And I think it's just looking so cool. It's so nice and saturated and bold. So I'll just blend those and then once again, help myself here a little bit by touching the light to the dark marker. And you can see how much that really does help just fix those harsh lines if you know I get those harsh lines a lot so I use this a lot because it really does help my coloring look better. So now that my pumpkins are colored I really want to create this three-dimensional look. So I'm going to take my darkest marker and really create a dark line behind that front pumpkin and you're going to see right now that all of a sudden it looks 3D. It looks so cool. I'm going to blend it just a little bit but not too much because I want to make sure that that darkness really stays there because I love that 3D look. I love this olive color for stems. I think it's just those two are so pretty together. So there's a little coloring there. And now it's time to work on this little wagon. And I love these two colors. I think they're so pretty, but the, the markers are really far apart from each other. So I definitely touch the light marker to the dark marker a lot to help blend with these because I have trouble blending them together, but I keep using them because I just love the colors. Now for this wagon, I wanted it to be darkest on the outside and kind of around those wheels and then also dark under the lip of the wagon. So I just right there laid a little bit of darkness under the wagon and you can see that I'm touching the markers together over and over again because those colors are really hard to blend. And now to finish off the wagon, I'm adding a little bit more darkness in those upper corners underneath the lip and that really gives it that extra three-dimensional pop just like what we did with the pumpkins. Now here is a look at all of the images that we colored today. Thank you guys so much for your patience with my uncooperative camera. I'm so glad that I was able to get the coloring up for all of the cute images in this set. It is one of my favorite sets to color. It is honestly so much fun. So up above, I am going to link to the main Happy Harvest video so you can see um, how to make some fun cards with it and then make sure to share with us what you create. And I just can't wait to see your gorgeous coloring and your gorgeous cards. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye. Thank you.